My guest today is Jennifer Nichols. She's a professional ballet dancer and as well as the founder of the Extension Method. Now you'll meet her in a moment. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. And you're going to hear Jennifer's. Well, welcome Jennifer. Hi. Hi, nice having you here on nice the show. Nice to be here, thank you. Now, um, you're a professional ballet dancer, you're a fitness instructor mm -hmm. and, and coach. Um, you wear a number of hats. Um, I, first and foremost, want to hear about something that I, that's really intrigued me. You've had the opportunity to perform at Versailles in Paris. I have. Let's talk about that right off the start. It was absolutely an extraordinary experience, I will say. Um, I had the pleasure of going uh, to Versailles with a wonderful small opera company here in Toronto um, called Opera Atelier. And Opera Atelier was invited uh, by the Chateau de Versailles to travel in April of this past year and take the production of Armide um, to perform in the palace. And I'm a member of the Corps de Ballet of that company, and as such, I was privileged to, uh, to attend and, and perform on that stage. Now, what interested you in ballet to begin with? I mean, do you remember a time in your, in your childhood where you, you thought, I want to be a ballet dancer? I was always very athletic. Mm. I was a uh, competitive a swimmer to begin, a synchronized swimmer and a racer. So I was very into movement, uh, gymnastics, quite well-rounded in my athletics. But uh, when I fell in love with music, um, which I, I learned from my father. My father's a broadcaster and a DJ, and my love of music comes from him, from his genes. Oh, wow. Good and stuff. I think that's really what uh, drew me into the art form right. of dance, because I was really compelled to, to move by certain pieces of music that I was falling in love with. And, uh, and it, it gave me the sense of abandon and a really f uh, a, a freedom in my movement and always elevated my mood. Um, it brought out a certain sense of creativity in me that I didn't uh, have in other areas. And uh, it, I also found it quite challenging. It was the most challenging thing I'd, I'd attempted. Um, and so I was stubborn. So it was the one thing I really wanted to stick with and master because I, I, I found it such a challenge. Oh, well, you know, you watch ballet dancers on stage, uh, and they look so graceful, and it looks, they make it look so effortless, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know it's not. It's a super fine mastery of right. detail and control. I always say to my students, um, athletes are extraordinary in, in what they can pull off, the, how Even high they can body. jump, um, how far they can jump, um, how fast they can run, and yet they can grunt, they can sweat, they can moan, but a dancer has to do the same amount of uh, physical um, excellence and at the same time make it look beautiful. Never show the, the hard work, the sweat. We just have to, to mask it all with this aura of elegance and control and that's, that's the hardest part I think. So Jennifer, what age did you start dancing at? I started actually quite late considering uh, the fact that I made it a professional career. Most people start at the age of three or six, eight years three. old. Oh, wow. Some, some people do, um, a little baby taught ballet. Um, but I actually didn't start until I was 14, 15. Um, when, when I was 16, I went away to professional ballet school, and that's when I really became serious and took it to the next level, to the professional level. However, my colleagues had all started when they were, when they were teeny tiny and it was a, a big catching up process for me. I had a lot of work to do. So I really wish I had been introduced to the art form at a younger age. Um, but I think starting a little bit later I, t I took it more seriously and I w it, it made me a bit more ferocious in terms of I'm going to make this happen. Now we talked about uh, your performance at Versailles. Mm -hmm. um, what other performances have you done that uh, um, have maybe perhaps been some of your favorites? Well I've, I've performed quite a bit around uh, or across Canada um, with uh, Le Grand Ballet Canadien in Montreal as part of their Cast Noisette, French for Nutcracker, um, which was quite extraordinary. The Banff uh, Festival Dance Company in, at the Banff Centre for the Arts. Um, that was an extraordinary experience. And uh, I've also had some really interesting um, performances with uh, a company of which I'm co-artistic director. Our very first performance with that company is quite uh, an iconic um, <laughs> memory for me. Uh, we were hired by the Rolling Stones 
the Rolling to perform Stones. a surprise birthday dance for Mick Jagger. I think it was his 62nd birthday, and they were in town in Toronto uh, rehearsing for their upcoming world tour. And Mick is a lover of all things classical. He loves opera. He loves ballet. And uh, so we were asked to do a, a surprise performance on point in the classical ballet genre for him in the middle of a rehearsal. And that was one of those moments that will definitely stick with me forever. So my performance of, uh, performances have been on grand stage um, a scale, huge stages, but then uh, in quirky little contexts such as that. And uh, they've always been, uh, always been different. Each one is really, really unique. That's the one thing about my career. Uh, it never repeats itself. So every day is, uh, is a new story. Now you are, in addition to being a uh, professional ballet dancer, um, you've also uh, created something called the Extension Method. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it? So the Extension Method is classical ballet technique adapted for fitness conditioning and athletics. So what I've done is taken the foundation of the classical ballet technique and uh, I guess you'd say sort of stripped away the satin and, uh, and revealed the muscle that's underneath. Um, it is much more accessible for everyone to, um, to learn ballet technique without having to, um, I'd say so to speak, put on the tights and go through the, the traditional steps of a class. If you want to really just pare it down to the physiological basics and work on developing the long lean muscle tone, working on your posture, your flexibility, um, I've sort of pared it down to much more of a, a fitness structured class. Um, there's lots of repetition, there's drill type sequences, right. and, uh, and you really do get a full body workout. It's a little bit of everything, um, some cardiovascular work, some, some uh, core strengthening work, um, sculpting the lower body. Um, it's really, really comprehensive, but it makes it much more accessible and palatable. It's sort of bite-sized pieces of ballet. And, uh, and less intimidating than walking into a traditional studio, I'd have to say. Now, of course, um, it's uh, uh, the home of the extension method is in the extension room here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about uh, your facility. Um, I decided to open the doors um, of the home of the extension method after I got to a point where many people around the city were clamoring for more classes, and I found that I was a bit of a nomad. I was jetting from one end of the city all day to teach classes and I thought well why don't I bring it under one roof and in doing so I'd create this wonderful environment a really sort of um, welcoming um, cozy environment for people to come and, and again not worry about being intimidated um, people of all levels all ages and come under one roof to to try all the different types of classes within the extension method um, genre under that umbrella and uh, at the same time make a space that was a home for artists to create, to rehearse, to present works in creation. So the, the, the tagline, I guess you'd call it for the extension room, is the place where fitness meets art. And as such, um, we open the doors for young choreographers to rent uh, rehearsal space and, and create new projects. Um, we have salon evenings where we bring in visual artists, um, musicians, uh, opera singers, and we present different arts um, together uh, under oh, one sounds roof. sounds great. Combining dance with yeah. other art forms. And it's, it's just this wonderful community that's being um, developed under that roof. Well, it sounds, um, it's really inspiring to me. Now listen, Jennifer, we're going to take a quick break, and this means it's my good to know minute, and I know that you've got a great success tip. As an entrepreneur, I would have to say that um, my best tip for anyone starting out in business or um, in any career, don't let yourself be paralyzed by fear or insecurity and wait and wait and wait until that perfect moment when you just know that you're ready. Because if you're always waiting to be ready, you're going to push that day back further and further and further. And I feel like um, if you just take one step at a time and keep diving in and putting yourself into new experiences, you will eventually be in that place where you're confident to call yourself an expert or an authority in your field. But if you wait until that perfect timing, you'll never, you'll never get there. You just have to take, take that leap. Keep going. So don't wait for the perfect timing and take that leap. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more here on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are.
Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Jennifer Nichols. She's a professional ballet dancer and founder of the Extension Method based here in Toronto. Uh, we're talking about blending ballet with fitness. Um, well, what makes the Extension Method so unique? I think what sets it apart from other ballet-based workouts, because there are quite a few um, these days. Ballet has um, had a, a definite resurgence. There's a big interest in it. Films such as Black Swan and shows like So You Think You Can Dance have really sort of charged a dance again. And uh, so there are ballet workouts springing up all over the place. A lot of them, most of them actually are bar-based workouts. And the bar workout is, is a great, uh, great workout. Um, we do have a component of the bar in our own program, the Extension Method program. But what we also do that others don't is take the dancers away from the bar and bring them to the center of the room for a center practice where you actually um, move your body through space so you're propelling yourself through space you're using different muscles um, you're jumping you're kicking you're turning and not just using the bar and balancing on one leg so it's definitely different in that respect it's a much more comprehensive full body workout um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely a different type of workout than going to the gym and and pumping iron and, and lifting weights. Uh, it's more about uh, using your own body weight to develop the strength. Um, extending everything moving out lengthening as opposed to flexing and pulling in. It's all about getting taller and longer and moving through as much space as you can possibly accomplish. Now you're a young entrepreneur. I mean. You're, you know, you're a ballet dancer, you've got the extension method, uh, but you're also an entrepreneur. Did you ever think that you would become a business owner? I remember at a young age being very stubborn in school, always wanting to do my own thing, always wanting to, to start new projects. I started a, a magazine uh, through the school when I was in grade three, and I always had these, these little projects on the side and startups. So it was in my blood even before I started dancing, and I, I always knew that I kind of wanted to take my own path and, uh, and be my own boss. I just didn't know how it was going to shape itself. And it shaped itself in interesting ways. Um, I run several different businesses as a director of, of a dance company, director of the studio and the program, but somehow they're all linked back to dance. So it's like this this core, which is which is dance, the heart of it, and then I've sort of spread out, and my branches are reaching everywhere, and I spread myself a bit too thin sometimes, as we all do, but uh, I'm always looking for different ways to to explore you know, what I can do. Well, you know, there's that uh, this idea in our culture of the starving artist, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's 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 an unfortunate reality for many artists. But you've managed to take your art, something mm -hmm. that you love, and turn it into a way of earning a living. It really was uh, what compelled me to start the dance company, of which I'm co-artistic director. My, my co-director, Anissa Teshbar, a uh, graduate of the National Ballet School. The two of us connected in the ballet studio in my early 20s. And the both of us were waitresses at different restaurants. And we got to the point where we were tired of coming home at 2, 3 in the morning, exhausted, being on our feet all night, and then getting up at the crack of dawn and dancing all day. And we saw our colleagues doing the same thing. And everyone was just beaten into the ground and, and really struggling. And we thought, well, there's got to be a way that we can make our bread and butter money, but somehow have it still relate back to dance. And so we started creating these um, tailor-made productions, which is what turned into Hit and Run Dance Productions. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a company which is based on um, privately commissioned work. So let's say, for example, a corporation will approach us and ask us to put together a performance for a black tie fundraiser event or something for, for Toronto International Film Festival or a fashion show or a makeup line. And so that's our way to, um, to pay our rent, so to speak, um, to, to be really creative and perpetuate our art, but uh, never have to go back to hustling with waiting tables, as, as great as that was at the time. Um, it's always kind of finding a way to adapt. These days, art um, is struggling. It's, um, it's, it's tough to make a living in any art form. So you have to find ways to be really inventive and creative with how you approach your art form and uh, not feel sort of stuck in, in, in one sort of um, box. Well, Jennifer, I have really enjoyed this time with you. Unfortunately, our time is up. Uh, it goes by so quickly, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it does. But anyway, you're a very inspiring young woman, and I wish you all the best uh, with, with your dance performances, with the extension method, and of course, the extension room. And, and I'm looking forward to taking a class one I'd day love soon. love to have you. All the best to you. Thank you for having me.
Of course, and if you want more information about Jennifer, you can find a link to her website uh, at extraordinarywomentv.com. And you can find out more information about past guests, uh, more about the show. You can contact me again uh, through the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories inspire you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skidder. See you soon.